Thank you very much, uh, Professor Mazaru and uh, all the panels. Yeah? So uh, in this session, actually, I would like to highlight what I've learned uh, from today's uh, and maybe probably from yesterday, uh, Dr. Shef and provided. So we have uh, actually a very insightful speech of uh, by three of uh, by the OBE practitioners uh, from four countries today, including Malaysia, Bangladesh, Australia, and India. And in the session number three, we have uh, three distinguished speakers uh, from Sahimi, from Malaysia, from uh, MPS, from uh, Bangladesh, and uh, uh, Professor Dr. Azhar Karim from Australia. And uh, in the second session, uh, session number four, we have uh, just now we have uh, Dr. Noor Fazila from Malaysia IAM and also Associate Professor Dr. Das Kumandal from India. Uh, from my uh, observation of my event today, we of Saimi highlight about the importance of the alumni involvement for the betterment of the program, whereby uh, the PO of the uh, program must be aligned with the mission and vision of the university. And he highlighted about the uh, PO, which have a, 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 a three, I'm not sure it's the right term or not, three segment, which is uh, first is about the establishment of the POs, the assessment and the CQI of the PO itself, whereby the assessments uh, of the POs is the attainment, attainment of the by the alumni. So it must be accessed by a proper tools, whether it's a direct or indirect tools by the uh, IHL itself. Yeah. So for example, in the UKM uh, example by uh, Professor Jaime, we conduct the alumni survey uh, as well as the employee survey to obtain the data of the attainment of the POs by our alumni. And then we analyze the data so that it can be used as a CQI for the program. Okay. And uh, the second speaker, uh, Professor Dr. Imtiaz uh, from Hansanova uh, University, uh, he highlighted about the importance of using rubrics in implementing the OBEs. Yeah? So in, he defined uh, this OBE as what he, he defined in his slide as a COPO based education, yeah? which by a part of directly measure the PO uh, explicitly and directly from the selected uh, courses. So it must also uh, supported by a proper rubric and marking scheme, et cetera. So, so the rubrics actually is a tool so, or a set of guidelines uh, to measure the attainments against a consistent of sets of criteria. And uh, the, he also uh, mentioned about the different types of rubrics, a holistic and analytic rubrics, which both of them have their advantage and disadvantage as uh, he presented today. And also he shared some example of rubric of uh, uh, integrated design project uh, in UN and as well as a thesis uh, evaluations from the mechanical engineering. Okay. And then uh, the third presenter from uh, Professor Azaharun, Azaharul Karim from uh, Buet, he uh, explained about the, uh, uh, sorry, from the, uh, sorry, not from Buet, from the, um, uh, QUT. 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 QUT, yeah, sorry, QUT. Yeah, Princeton Institute of Technology, I'm sorry. So uh, it's more to the, how the CLO level and as well as how he implement in his, his uh, class uh, with some videos uh, of how the CLO is measured of, I think the class is uh, being manufacturing uh, by, for the simulation of manufacturing concept uh, by engaging the students uh, uh, of the process. Yeah. On the sec on the second session today, our second number session number four, we have uh, SSA Professor Dr. Nofazila from IIUM, where she gave a talk about the outcome-based education, 
and we hi she highlight uh, why the IHL needs to do the CQI and as well as some uh, experience of OB implementation in IAUM uh, where the course is uh, divided into enabling and culminating courses uh, such as IDP and FIP. And also she highlight the inputs to the CQI, uh, which is uh, CAR or Cost Assessment Report, PR Program Assessment Report and PR Program Education Assessment Report and at the exit surveys, as well as others such as industrial training surveys and employers, uh, IAP, uh, where they invite some IAPs to give a talk, as well as external and uh, assessors, benchmarkings, alumni service, and what is most important is all these inputs must be documented so that we have a proof that the CQI is properly implemented. And also we have some question related to the administrative uh, of how it is implemented. So she clearly addressed uh, all the question about the administrative in IUM, uh, whereby uh, as what I can conclude is the CQI basically is a continuous process that must be done uh, in the course level in each semester to assess the attainment of the CLO. Yeah. And finally, uh, we have a professor, uh, Dr. Kumar Dasmandal, about the accreditation of the design, where he highlight the uh, challenges of we educators in this 21st century uh, on how we want to equip them, keep the students with the knowledge, skill, and attitudes, and as well as how to do the CQI or activities improve, improvement of the curriculum. And also, uh, I, it's very interesting that she, he, he shared uh, on his uh, slide, or not slide, I think a website that is for how the example of practices of one courses, I think the course is a basic electrical engineering, uh, uh, how they design the courses and uh, in terms of, they have a, a course overviews, which is not only explain the content of the course, but also uh, the motivation of this course so that it can motivate the student to come to, the, to take the course. Yeah? And because it's very important to motivate them and also as well as uh, the depth of the lecture before they come to the class so that it can increase the engagement of the student in the class. I think that's all that what I can conclude uh, from my observation from the uh, five presenters today. Uh, how about you, Dr. El Sheikh? Thank you both. Uh, yeah, you can share some of the of the learning that we, we had from yesterday. Uh, yesterday we had less number of, of presentations. In fact, we had only three. So if I can start with the first one, uh, the title of the first presentation was an overview of Washington Accord requirements. That was presented by Professor Shahrir Abdullah. So in that presentation, uh, basically what, what Prof. Shahid did is uh, to give some background history about Washington Accord, uh, also to compare the Washington Accord with the other two accords. We have Dublin Accord and we have, uh, uh, the third one is, uh, is Washington, Dublin and, uh, okay. Another one, Sydney, Sydney Accord. Sydney, yeah, Sydney Accord. Thank you, thank you for the reminder. Yes, and Sydney Accord. So conversion between the three accords, and uh, also uh, he shared that, that that important paper, the uh, the graduate uh, the, the the graduate attributes and professional competencies, uh, which give the details about what really we need to have in our programs. Uh, the, the, that's a very crucial paper. So from that paper, he he give more, more information about the Washington Accord and the requirements for, for Washington Accord. He made a comparison between the, the two versions of the paper because we have an old version, 2013, and now we have a new version, 2021. He highlighted the, the changes that we have in the new version and why we have these changes and so on. 
he discussed or he focused more on the knowledge profile. He also touched on the complex engineering problems without going deep into that. Uh, so he, he fo focused more on, on the knowledge profile. That was for the first presentation. The second presentation, which is titled Incorporating Complex Problem Solving and Complex Engineering Activities in an Engineering Program. That was presented by Dr. Zampri, Zampri Harun from UM, Malaysia. So uh, this, this second presentation was a kind of continuation of the first presentation. Okay, so uh, because the other aspect, which is very important about Washington Accord, in, in addition to the knowledge profile, is a complex engineering solving or complex engineering problem and also complex engineering activities. So the presenter also explained about these two different concepts, the uh, CBS and CEA, uh, how they are defined. Uh, and, and to do that, he referred to the manual by the Accreditation Council in Bangladesh. And sometimes he also uh, do comparison with the, with the definitions that we had in Malaysia. Uh, also in the accreditation uh, from the accreditation council in Malaysia, uh, almost they are same. There, there, there are few differences here and there uh, in terms of the definitions and in terms of the number of criteria that we have to take uh, to consider a problem as a complex problem or the activity uh, the activity as a complex engineering activity. Uh, we also had yeah, some, some uh, questions which were answered by, by the presenter uh, afterwards. Uh, the third and last presentation, it was titled Implementation of Changes in Curriculum Structure to Engineering Degree Program to Future Proof Graduates at Singapore Institute of Technology. And this one was presented by Dr. Fu Yong Lim. And in this presentation, uh, Dr. Fu has shared a kind of unique experience of uh, this uh, very young university, the Singapore Institute of Technology or SIT. So in SIT, uh, they, they, they design their programs in, in a, a kind of unique way. And the focus is more on uh, giving like life experience to students. And as he mentioned, maybe they are, you know, that, that was at the cost of less focus on Washington Accord and the accreditation, maybe to some extent. Okay, so they, they uh, before he give uh, details about the design of, of the programs they have in SIT, he give some, he gave some introduction to the landscape of higher education in Singapore, so what are the institutes there? Uh, how uh, he, he also referred to some classification uh, for the institute there, ranging from like uh, more, more uh, practical to less, uh, more theoretical, you know, and he, ha he had some, some, some interesting classification for the institutes and he showed the, the, the position of SIT within that, that uh, yeah, that map of, uh, of, of institutes where SIT sits. So the philosophy of SIT is to make the program more close to the industry and to address the requirements from the industry and emphasize those, those, those requirements. And as a result of that, as he showed and shared with us, the empl employability of their students is very high is always around 90%. And he mentioned that even some students are hired uh, before they, they, they finish the program. So they already assured that they have some uh, work in place. Uh, but like I said, that all that came at, you know, like, like there was a trade-off and there was some compromise uh, when it came to Washington Accord and, and accreditation and maybe even OB. So the, the main focus was on industry and industrial requirements. Uh, he also shared some kind of uh, mapping of uh, active versus uh, passive classes and also 
theory-based, industry-based classes, and uh, he showed how their philosophy is reflected into that uh, kind of map. Uh, yeah, and he shared also some some more detailed uh, more more details about the program structure, and he also showed uh, the you know now now they are they are working on their new uh, their future campus, and even that campus is being prepared and uh, is being built in a way to reflect the philosophy of the of the university. And the students, even the current students, are contributing to the to establishing this new campus and the location and the link uh, the, the, of the campus to the industry. All these things, all these details, which are related to the philosophy of the institute, was addressed in their uh, in their new new uh, new campus. Uh, so that that was the the last presentation. Afterwards, we had a panel discussion. In, in our panel discussion, we had three panel members. We had Professor Noor Kamaria, from, uh, who is the Associate Director of the Engineering Accreditation Council in Malaysia. We also had Professor Muhammad Shuhaimi, the Director of UKM Alumni Relations, who was also presented today. And we had Professor Ramesh Singh, who is the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering in the University Technology Brunei. So these were the three, uh, three panel members, and, and together they addressed and discussed a number of, of, uh, of issues. Uh, I, yeah, I would like to share at least a few of them. So they, they discussed the, the industrial training, how big or small that should be, and how it can be linked, well linked to the program and uh, like benefit the program and the students. They also address the differences in implementing OBE and Washington Accord frameworks. That is, there's no one equation or one way to implement all this, but different universities, they come with or, uh, their own different interpretations and implementation methods for, for the OBE. Uh, also, they, they discuss the differences between complex problem solving, uh, difficult problem, and high order level uh, problems okay so the because there there was a, a question uh, during one of the sessions about this so they they they, they, they kind of like uh, shed more light on the difference between these three terms uh yeah to remove any confusion about the the, the, the terms uh there was also a question which was raised during the presentation and they address that question again and this is the question of whether a student who is has got has passed the CGPA, okay, or GPA, but failed some of the program outcomes, should we let this student to pass or not? Okay, so they also get gave some uh, insight uh, on that that uh, question, and uh, also they addressed. Uh, the point that brought by by the last presenter of uh, like living learning or life learning it's not lifelong learning but living learning they 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 the term they use there is living lab okay so that means uh, we try to to take the students to uh, real situations where they learn how engineering really works rather than just teaching them the theory in the classes and try to imitate these uh, things in the class. Uh, this is in short, uh, the, yeah, I try to, to put um, all or most of the points discussed in the, in the panel discussion. And I think that's all I had summarized from yesterday uh, presentations and panel discussion. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to uh, Sanullah University to bro Professor Mathart uh, to, give, to give us this opportunity and to all the presenters, all panel members and all the audience. And I'm really honored and I'm really glad that uh, I had this time uh, during this symposium. Thank you, Salaam Alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. Okay, I think um, <laughs> we are near to the end. Now I would like to request our I mean, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Arsenal University of Science and 
technology, uh, Professor Dr. Muhammad Fazli Ilahi to deliver his closing speech. Sir. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Honorable guests from all over the world. I may not take much time to mention all the great names in the field of OBE and accreditation. We are honored by your presence. In the last few, last two days, including today, it had been a very lively occasion for us. The discussions, the presentations were very fruitful and we enjoyed very much from the viewpoint of gaining knowledge. And the people who attended, they would benefit from all the presentations. I think that Asunula University is also grateful for their presence. And it has also benefited a lot from the presentations and the discussions. The learning process is a continuous process. And as we have also discussed in this session that the continuous quality improvement must be in place all the time. There must be innovative education. This innovative education leads us to standardize of the enhancement of the standards of the education. We are here in this session to exchange our experiences, our knowledge that will help everybody. The Washington Accord is our fundamental the, the knowledge or the key points that we are adhering to and we are trying to improve our own standards by adhering to the guidelines of the Washington Accord. But every details cannot be found there. As we have seen during the discussions, there are minute points to be resolved. As few minutes back, we had been talking about the administrative setup to assist the accreditation process or the enhancement of the OB implementation process. So the administration must also be a part of this learning process so that they can assist our teachers or the people who are involved in the IQAC to have their uh, task simplified. We had people from the different countries, from Malaysia, many of the people from Malaysia was there, as well as Australia, USA, India, and not to mention Bangladesh as well. So I'm grateful particularly to the people who contributed a lot to this symposium. But I must not forget to congratulate the people who worked behind, those who did not speak, but put a lot of efforts from the organizing committee led by the director of IQC, Professor Majarul Islam, who mentioned to me the different names of the people from different countries who has encouraged him by giving their consent to be a part of this international symposium. So on behalf of the Asanullah University, uh, on my own behalf, I would like to put in record my gratefulness to all those people who participated, contributed, presented, and conducted, coordinated. So it will be remembered by me for a long time. And I assure you, this will be your efforts and your contributions will be remembered by all the people of my team. And thank you very much, everybody, and hope to see you again in a, a similar function later on, but with a higher level of knowledge. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much, sir. Uh, I really appreciate your uh, closing speech. Now, I think the last thing is my vote of thanks, and um, I'm really, um, 
I'm really happy that, <laughs> that uh, Alhamdulillah, it was a kind of humble effort from our, our end to conduct this symposium. And uh, within a short time, Alhamdulillah, we managed some distinguished personalities in the realm of OBE. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, we had distinguished uh, invited guests, Professor Saifur Rahman, Professor Dr. Saiful Amin, um, they came and they accepted our request and came during the inaugural ceremony. Also, all the invited speakers, mashallah, all of them except Professor Hashmi, he had some issues with his computer, so he could not come. However, the other presenters, eight of them, they alhamdulillah accepted our invitation. Even despite their busy schedules, they showed up. Um, really grateful to all of you. Um, and also our panel members, all of them are, I mean, they're distinguished personalities. Yeah, all of them. And I'm really happy to see them in our humble effort. Um, and uh, um, on behalf of the organizing committee, me, uh, I was really, it was a kind of collaborative effort. It's not only from Arsenal University of Science and Technology. We had, I mean, uh, colleagues from IIUM, from uh, that was Professor Mohammed Raisuddin Khan. He and from UKM, Dr. Zamri Harun, he really helped a lot. And also Dr. El Sheikh, who also really helped us a lot. I mean, I, I would like to thank the organizing committee. And also um, we had all these um, um, session coordinators and I will, I, I want, you to see them yeah they really helped me they are the they were like the backbone of this uh, backbone of this uh, symposium really I, 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 if you don't mind i would, i want to uh, basically uh, show them i mean I'm, i think i i want to put them under their okay they are under spotlight yeah okay i will yeah i'm stopping the share yeah Yes. Now you can see this is this uh, we we are trying to conduct it uh, conduct this symposium from our um, um, bid rent virtual theater. This is um, me and our honorable visitor is here, and then um, we have all these uh, session um, coordinators. They are uh, sitting behind me. Uh, like um, let me introduce them one by one. Okay, Zabir. He's from CAC, Computer Science and Engineering. Um, then he he conducted session number, um, which session? Technical session number two. Okay, then we had um, this uh, Shuhan from Civil Engineering. Uh, he conducted um, the session number, technical session number one. And we have uh, uh, Engineer Faisal Rahman. He uh, was in charge of of inaugural session, and I have uh, Mr. Wahi Wahad. He was responsible. Can you raise your hand, Wahad? Yeah. Uh, he was responsible for uh, this uh, closing session, and we have uh, Madam Umrahani. Oh, Saif is also there. He was Saif. Yeah, raise your hand. Saif was responsible for technical session number four, and our Madam Umrahani. Uh, Umrahani was. Um, responsible for technical session number three. She, she's not here, she's taking care of some exam or something, some important exam or something. Alhamdulillah. So um, um, really these are the people who helped us in, in the symposium. I, I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart. Okay. Uh, now, just before I conclude this uh, symposium, I just want to tell you that we have, um, already uploaded the videos for uh, yesterday's session. So if you visit the, uh, um, visit the symposium website, then you will, if you go to the bottom, you will see videos of the sessions. If you click there, then you will see already we have uploaded uh, the videos from, from the inaugural session, technical session number one, technical session number two. And inshallah, I will upload the remaining videos, inshallah, uh, you will find them here so that they last, so that people benefit. And this is what we, we were uh, trying. I mean, so that benefit, benefit uh, 
people, the OB professionals. Yeah. So, um, so these videos in the future will help others yeah, in their OB programs, inshallah. This is what we are hoping. Yeah. So I have finally, I would like to, I mean, seek your apology our, for our shortcomings. Yeah. For me, this is the, this, this is the first time I'm kind of uh, organizing a symposium, international symposium like this. So I had shortcomings. So forgive me with my shortcomings. I'm wishing all the best for all of you. Fi amanillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. So we finish here. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Assalamu alaikum. Congratulations. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, Paul. Leave for it. Leave for it. Thank you.